Good morning. Glad you're here to worship with us this morning. Happy Mother's Day <laughs> to all the uh, mothers and uh, the ladies here today. We appreciate you. And uh, where would the men be without them? What would they do? <laughs> be in bad shape. <laughs> we appreciate them very much. Uh, the ones to be in prayer for uh, today and this week, uh, Travis, Al, and Linda. Roger and Merle. Merle's not with us today. She is not feeling well, so uh, send an extra prayer up for her. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, Buddy and Sharon, uh, Buddy's traveling today. Yeah, I don't think he's feeling that well either, and Sharon is with us this morning. Finally, she's got feels a little bit better to be here. So glad of that. Uh, Mike and Donna, Marty and Anita, the Camp family, the Glass family, the Albright family, and uh, Dexter and Jack L, and the whole island of St. Vincent. Uh, nice song, Brenda and Denise. Didn't know if Denise was going to be here either, but uh, she had a bad migraine this morning, but she's here. Thank the Lord for that. Uh, we're going to sing, uh, well, this first, the uh, Annie Armstrong. Uh, we're going to still go through the this month of May to uh, take up the... Uh, offering for it, so uh, whenever you'd like to give that the rest of the month, I think we've got a couple more Sundays for that. The uh, Baptist Children Children's Home, the uh, food roundup, there's uh, a little bit of food back there now, I see finally, but uh, we're going through uh, next Sunday for that, May the 16th, so it'll be next Sunday on the uh, Baptist, Baptist Children's Home on the food roundup. Uh, we're going to sing a couple of hymns, then we'll get our uh, pastor up here after that to do a message and the good news. Uh, so let's uh, please stand and turn to page four. To God be the glory. That's your next word. <laughs> Three eighty six, it's on your screen. Family 
of God. We'll sing this through a couple of times since it's so short. Good morning. Make sure I get on here. We have a children's church. All right. We have a children's church. Children are dismissed. There goes half the congregation. That's good, though. Right? All right, now, look. I know y'all all slept good last night. Amen? Y'all going to have to help me out this morning now. I don't want to have to preach and amen me too. I want to I wanna wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. And uh, I just want to make mention of that last song that we just sung there. Uh, because this message is not really, a, I don't guess, a salvation message. Hopefully it will be encouraging to mothers and maybe the rest of us too. But, um, folks. You need to you need to be part of the family of God, and uh, being part of the family of God is not coming to church, it's not giving tithes, it's not being baptized, it's not being hypnotized, mesmerized, or indoctrinized by me. It's 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 having a personal relationship. It's a it's a point in time. As Jesus said, a man shall not see the kingdom of heaven unless that man is born again. You, you need to be born again. So um, if you've never experienced that, uh, I encourage you. I encourage you. Come talk to me. Man, it's nothing embarrassing. Come talk to me. You know, be a part of the family of God. I said this a while back. And I, it wasn't it wasn't original with me. I read it somewhere, but uh, you don't have to do a thing to go to hell. God don't send nobody to hell. You just keep staying on that path. You get born, you just stay on that path. That 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 road's wide, and there's a lot of people just going there. In order to change your destination, God made you a way, and you got to you got to walk off of that world's path, and you've got to step on the path with Jesus Christ. It's a narrow path that leads to heaven and, a, and, and eternal life. Amen? All right. Well, there's your salvation message. You're going to have, you're going to have three messages for Marty today if you came today for Sunday school and, uh, and uh, done had a salvation message here. Now we're going to have a Mother's Day message. If you have your Bible, I'm going to invite you to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 1. I was actually thinking about a different message and and uh, I don't know, this, this here just came, came back to mind, and I just believe this is where we need to be at. John and John Wesley's mother, her name was Susanna Wesley. She had 19 children. 19. Now, a lot of them died at birth or very early on. Matter of fact, at her death, there was only eight of them still living. Okay. But what people used to say about her house was you never heard a loud voice. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I raised two, 
and you heard some loud voices around my house. I, I'm just going to tell you. I got a deep voice. When, when I spoke, three houses down, it rattled. Okay? I mean, I'm telling you, uh, I was loud. But they, they say that Susanna Wesley was not, she was not loud. She never raised her voice. But yet she raised a whole house full of preachers and missionaries and godly women. It, that's amazing, man. I mean, that, that is. You think about what all uh, the Wesley boys contributed uh, to our hymn book and to our doctrine and to just uh, theology and that kind of stuff. Man, I mean, all these Methodist churches that are all around the countryside, they come from them boys. Uh, their heritage anyway. So uh, there's something to be said uh, about the mother and her influence. Her influence now. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. We're not going there. I just want to read this to you because we don't like this verse. It says, Notwithstanding, she, talking about the ladies, the, the mothers, shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and sobriety. Ladies, y'all have a very, very important role in the home and in the church, and that is to influence your children. I mean, it really is. I, I don't know how many people I have heard, uh, read, talked to. They talk about their mothers and the influence that their mothers had on them and their Christian walk. Okay? Uh, yesterday, we had a, a, a birthday party here for one of my grandchildren. And they were all here. All my grandchildren were here. And that was a good time. I had a lot of other people here. And... Uh, my baby girl, when she first had her child, she thought she was going to break it. I mean, it was just, and everything the doctor said was gospel. It don't matter what mama said, grandma said, great grand, don't matter. That doctor knew more. He had never had one child. Didn't have no children and never had none. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he knew more about raising children than all those people that raised children. All those generations that knew how to uh, feed them a little, you know, mash a little something up, put it on their tongue. You, you know that. Potatoes and all that. You know how you do them children, you know? And and no, we couldn't do nothing except just what the doctor said. Now, that's when that's when the baby was first born. Well, it ain't the way it is now. She done, she done grew into being a mother. But... Uh, <laughs> But it was so amazing yesterday, and, and, uh, and I'm just going to brag on her, okay? I was watching her, and she was sitting over there, and she was conversing with all the adults, you know, and, 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 and that particular grandchild was the smallest one, and, and she's running around everywhere, playing with her cousins and playing with all the other kids, and uh, she's just a toddler. And every once in a while, my daughter's antennas, you'd see it. They'd go up like this right here. And she'd turn, and, and there would be hers over there getting ready to get into something. And she'd just speak. And I only seen her had to get up one time, one time. She'd just speak, and her voice carried authority with that, that child. And that, that child would just quit doing whatever she was doing, except for that one time that she got a little angsty that one time. And I let, let me tell you, now, I'm authoritarian. I am. I understand. And she's with me. We're getting ready to leave. And uh, she wanted to go out. And I opened the door. And I had already locked the door. And she runs out there. And she goes about halfway up the hill over here going towards the road over there. And I'm like, I'm calling her by her name. You know, come back. Come back. Come back. And uh, she just ain't like she don't even hear me. My daughter's in there inside. She heard her daddy call twice. She knew that the next time it wasn't going to be good. And so... Uh, <laughs> She speaks, calls her by her name. She stops, turns around, and comes straight back in the door. Where'd you get that at, you know? Mothers has got a great influence on their children. They really do. Mothers are great. They are. Uh, you know, we've been, we've been talking a lot about... We've been going through the book of Ephesians, and we dealt with all those hard passages about submission and all that and, and you know i read this passage the other week about submitting to each other 
and and uh, it comes out of First Corinthians. And Paul said this in First Corinthians chapter eleven, verses eight through twelve. He says, "For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have the power of her head, because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman." Neither is the woman without the man in the Lord. Now I want you to listen to what he says here. For as the woman is of the man, even so the man also by the woman. But all things are God. So what he's saying is, guys, Adam was created first, but since him, without a woman, you ain't here. Okay? Right? How many of you come out of a test too? Right. Without, without your mother, you're not here. So guys, let me tell you something. Love on your mothers. If they're alive today and you have the opportunity to call them, call them and wish them a happy Mother's Day. Ladies, do the same thing, okay? Honor your mother and your father. To honor your mothers. Without them, we just wouldn't be what we are. I love my mother. I love my dad. But I love my mother. I, I'm blessed. I got two mamas. How's that? I actually got a whole lot more than that. I got a whole lot of ladies that had a whole lot to do with my raising and and uh, who I am. All right. With that said, I want to look at a passage of scripture. There's a lot of ladies in this in the Bible that we could talk about. A lot of ladies. I mean, you've got Eve. You've got Naomi. You have Rebecca and uh, oh me, Rachel and Leah and Bathsheba. You've got all the kings. A lot of them, it says something about their mothers. You have Mary, the mother of Jesus. You have um, her, her uh, cousin, Elizabeth. Uh, you have Timothy's mother and, and grandmother. Uh, and I, they're not going to come to me right now. I had it earlier, but they're not going to come to me. Huh? Eunice and Lois. And... Um, You've got all kinds of ladies. You have Peter's mother-in-law. You have all kinds of ladies in Scripture that you could actually go to and, and pull something from. And like I say, I thought about a different place this morning. I kind of looked at it earlier this week, but I really believe this is where I want to go. So I want to talk this morning about uh, this family here, and I want to talk about Hannah. Hannah. Let's read, if you don't mind, let's read. Uh, several verses here. I'll stop occasionally and I'll talk. How's that? That'll keep you from hearing my voice so much. Now, there was a certain man, verse 1, of Ramathene Zophim of Mount Euph uh, Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, and his son, he was the son of Jerom, Jerom and the son of Elhu, the son of Tuhu, the son of Zufa, an Ephraite. Man, I'm going to tell you what. I love these Old Testament names, don't y'all? Verse 2. And he had two wives. Now, there's a reason that he's got two wives. It's going to explain it to you, but you've got to pay attention. Okay? Two wives. Look at it. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. That was his first wife. That's why she's listed first. And the name of the other, Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. That's why he was married twice. In the days that they lived in, man had to have children. He had to have a son heir. Okay, they did. And he had two wives. He was trying to, he was trying, he'd learned that from who? Father Abraham. I'm, I'm glad y'all remember that. And so he had two wives. Bless his heart. I got one. She about worse me to death. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Verse 3. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord uh, of hosts in Shiloh. And, um, and the two sons of Eli, Hopinai and Penias, the priest of the Lord, were there. Now, I think they're telling you about his two sons for a reason as well. I think we're going to see that in just a minute. So you remember, Eli had two sons. Do you remember anything about his two sons? They were wicked, wasn't they? Okay. Look 
Okay, so just remember that. They were wicked. You remember that it told you about them right there because I think there's a reason. Verse 4. And when the time was that uh, Elkanah offered, he gave to uh, Peniah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. So she had sons and daughters. Man, she was kind of, some kind of blessed, wasn't she? All right, but now look. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Now, let me just say this to you. When it says he gave her a worthy portion, where have you seen that before in Scripture? What about, what about when Samuel has Saul at his house? He gave him what? He gave him a large portion of food. I mean, it was a gigantic. He was the honored guest there at Samuel's house. Samuel, which is going to be Hannah's son here in a few minutes, is the one that did that. Also, we, we see Joseph did that with his brother Benjamin. All right, so it's a place of honor. So he, he, gave, he gave Hannah this gigantic portion. Now, I'm going to tell you something about what's going on here. Three times a year, three times a year, Israel, the men of Israel was commanded to go up and, and to worship God in Shiloh. What were the three times? Do you remember? Unleavened bread, Passover, and first fruits. One of the things that they would do was they would have, there's a, a free will offering. There's a thanksgiving free will offering. You're being thankful to God. If y'all remember when we went through the book of Leviticus, when you have these offerings where you are thankful to God, what happens is you give the priest his portion and then you and your friends and your family get to eat with the Lord. You get to have a meal with the Lord. And that is what's going on right here. And Hannah is getting this gigantic portion at this Thanksgiving offering where she's eating before the Lord. Keep that in mind. Look what happens here. Verse uh, 6. And her adversary, so his other wife, also provoked her sore to make her fret because the Lord had stood up her womb. Now that you think about this now, they're, they're, they're eating before the Lord and, and her, her husband's other wife is poking her. And, and, and making fun of her, and making her where she don't enjoy the presence of God. Just think about that now. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. She did not eat this Thanksgiving offering because she wasn't thankful. She was, she was fretting. She was depressed. She was hurt, and she was concentrating not on who God is, but she was concentrating on what she didn't have. Do you know one of the problems we have today? <laughs> oh, man, y'all don't know where I'm going with this. Do you know one of the problems we have today as Americans? We're all the time concentrating on what we don't have and not who has us. You understand? You think about all the goodness God has given you, the blessings that He gave you this morning. we got a whole bunch of people that would like to be here this morning and they're not feeling good. Y'all got up this morning feeling good and y'all was complaining. Oh, we got to go to church here, that old preacher today. I could have been somewhere. I could have been at the lake. I could have been at the beach. I could have slept in. I could have had breakfast in bed. I could have had a cup of coffee in bed. I could have... I could have whatever it was I wanted. But I gotta go hear that old preacher. We always we always get depressed and we if we get to concentrating on what we don't have, other people will hurt us. I want you to look at this now though. Verse eight verse eight, because this is this is her brokenness. Then said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why don't you eat? And why is it thy heart grievous 
Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat at her seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. Now he's the high priest at the time, Eli is. Verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. Now, I want to stop a minute. I want to tell you something now, folks. I don't know what a lot of you are going through. I don't know what kind of burden you're carrying. I don't know what, what kind of wagon you got full, okay? Because a lot of you don't talk to me, okay? But that's okay. But I can tell you this right now. If you got your focus on something besides what God is and who he is. And you're depressed in your heart. And you're broken in your heart. The only thing that's going to make that better. Is when you get with God. Not with get with Marty. But when you get with God. And you get down on your knees before God and, and you confess to Him what is in your heart because He already knows what's there. And confess to Him and say, Lord, I am putting this in front of you. And I am broken about it. I want you to help me get past it. Then and only then. Is God going to hear you? Now, I want, I want you to see what's going on. And I can, I can give you something personally, but I won't this morning on that. But I want you to look what happens here now. She wept sore before the Lord. She prayed unto him. And I want you to look what she done. And I'm going to give you a big warning right here. And she vowed a vow. Now, let me tell you something about vow and a vow. Let me just give you some verses. Numbers chapter 30, verse 2. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord, will, uh, the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee and it should be sin unto thee. Now I want you to listen to what Ecclesiastes says. Verses 5, of uh, chapter 5, verse 4 through 7. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For if he had no pleasure in fools, pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou should not vow, than thou should vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was in error. Therefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands. For in the multitude of dreams and many words there is also divers vanities, but fear thou God. Listen to me, folks. Don't you think that God's a big teddy bear? Some old man sitting up on a rocking chair and you can say anything you want to him and you can promise him and swear Lord if you will just do this for me I will never miss another Sunday service Lord if you'll just do this I will give you half of what I owe Lord if you just yeah. listen don't vow no vow to God and don't think that he's going to be slack and not requiring it of your hand okay Hear me, folks. That might all be Old Testament, but it still carries over to today. All right? Don't promise God something you're not willing to do. Be careful. Don't, don't say, Lord, I wish I could do that, but whoo, I don't know if I can or not. Be honest with him. You're just flesh and blood, folks, just like me. Don't vow something that you can't, can't keep. Hannah makes a vow to him. I want you to look at this now. We go in places. You just hang on. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget not thy handmaid, 
but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. She is making a Nazarite out of her son that she don't even have yet. A Nazarite valve, I'm just going to give you this and you can go look at it later, but it's found in, in Numbers chapter 6. And you can go look at the laws of the Nazarite if you'd like to. But now let me give you something interesting. Now ladies, I'm, I'm coming, so y'all just, y'all just wait. When you look at the book of Judges, Samuel was the last judge. Did y'all know that? Because y'all come to church here, and I tell y'all that. So, he's the last judge of Israel. Samuel is a contemporary of Samson. They're alive at the same time. Now, Samson's older, but they're alive at the same time. When you go and look at Judges chapter 13, and you look at Samson's parents, his mother was barren too. And the angel appeared to her and told her, you're going to have a son and he's going to be a Nazarite. They were not very religious people, it does not look like. And if you look at them, Samson broke every Nazarite vow that there was. He did. Every one of them. But yet, here Hannah is. She's a religious lady. She's already walking with God. And she says, I will, I will give you this son that you give me. I'll give him back to you all the day. And he shall be a Nazarite unto you. I will separate him unto you. And you think about that. Again, ladies, what kind of influence do you have on your children? Brother, could you put that up on the screen? I want you to look at this. This guy was actually on my mind Friday, if, if he can get it up there. This guy was on my mind Friday. This is one of the guys I went to school with right here. The guy right there in the middle with the blue shirt. His name is Aaron Cockrell. He is a missionary to Peru. A missionary to Peru. Let me read you because I can't read it from up there, so you'll just have... He's, he's given this to his mother. Happy Mother's Day to the most amazing mom I have ever had. <laughs> Even I, if I could have selected my mother, I couldn't think of anyone more patient, kind, and loving. This picture was taken on Christmas Day 2019. It was the last time I have gotten to hug her and be with her. She entrusts her kids to God. Even they are taken a far away mom today I rise up a call to you are blessed so why you want to put that up there for mothers are you willing to say Lord I will give you that child back are you willing to pray that God will use that child to serve him wherever are you wanting to hold them and hug them and hang on to them and have your will in their life? The safest place in anybody's life is in the center of God's will. That's the safest place. I remember the last conversation I had with this young man and his wife, Stephanie. That's his wife there holding the little boy on the end. I remember uh, the last conversation I had him. It was at Piedmont. We're standing at the, at the welcome desk there as you as you come into uh, where the library was at and he was telling me he just got back from him and her they just got back from a, a survey trip like three months in Peru he said I'm going to Peru he said God designed me to be in Peru I'm like Peru of all places why you want to go to Peru but that's that's where he wanted to go he had been in the jungles he had been in the mountains. They had traveled the whole country. He said, I was raised in, uh, in rural Ohio. He said, I'm used to the cold weather. I'm used to that. I, I just, it's for me. It's where God designed me to be. 
are you willing to pray for your children, to be missionaries that you don't get to see? Look at that. 2019, the last time he got to put his hands on his mother. He didn't come from no wealthy family. You will, are you willing to let your kids go and, and, and be servants of God wherever he would have them go? Oh, mothers, I'm telling you. Oh, you can take that down. We're going to go back to our text. Um, that's what Hannah says. She says, I'm going to give you my son if you'll give me that son. Now, I want you to look at this because some of you ain't going to like this. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now, Hannah, she spake in her heart only, her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought that she had been drunken. Why do you reckon he, he thought she was one of those women? I think it's got something to do with his sons because he was worried about them. But anyway, look at verse 15. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. Oh, no, wait a minute. Verse 14. And Eli said to her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah said, No, my Lord. I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've not drunk neither wine nor Budweiser. That, that strong drink right there is, is, is beer. I know y'all don't believe that, but it is. But, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for the daughter of Belial, in other words, Satan. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, have I spoken there in two. So what did she consider the woman that was drunken? Oh, man. Do you see that there? She, she, can, she considered that with, with a daughter of Satan, somebody that was a drunk. All right. I know that don't, uh, don't please nobody, but that's what she said. So we see Hannah's brokenness. Now I want you to see her blessing. Look, look with me now. Verse 17. Then Eli said unto her, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition and thou has, uh, that thou hast asked for. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went uh, her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. All of a sudden, somebody she, she poured her heart out to God. She makes this promise to God, and then somebody comes along and says, God's going to bless you. Ladies, let me tell you, sometimes your heart gets heavy and it gets broken. It does. If you'll pour it out to God, I promise you, I promise you, as you pour it out to God, eventually you're going to break through on the sunlight of things. I guarantee you that. And that's exactly what happens right here. She comes through, and now she's promised a blessing from the priest. Now, it's a different time than what it is now. I can't bless you. Did you know that? I'm preaching to y'all. Y'all all don't look blessed at all. I can't bless you. In that day, they could. I can't bless you. I can, just, I can pray for you, uh, but I don't have no blessing to give you. I really don't. Um, I'm sorry. But... But she's blessed. I want you to look at this thing. Now go on. Uh, verse 20. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about, uh, about after Hannah had conceived, so now she's pregnant, that she bare a son, exactly what she asked for, and called his name Samuel. Why? Because I have asked of him the Lord. It, and it actually means the Lord has heard, or the Lord hears. Do you know what uh, Samson means? Shining. Let, let me stop just to... Oh, I know y'all just ready for me to get on with it. But let me point out something about Samson. Now, I, don't, I hope all of you have read the book of Judges. But when you read the book of Judges, the book of Judges is about God taking weak things and using them for His glory. Uh, you, you got one guy, he's got an ox do goad. Uh, you got one guy that's got the jawbone of a, a donkey. Then you got Gideon. Oh, thy mighty man of valor. What was Gideon at? He was hiding over there in, in the uh, place where the women would actually uh, wane their flower at. He was hiding over there. Oh, you mighty man of valor. Where's all your weapons of war, son? He got, he got one of them little whining things or doing a woman's job. 
of that. It's sarcasm. It is. But out of all the judges that you had, the judge that, I guarantee you, the average young man, if, if you told him about each one of the judges, this would be the one that every young man would want to be. Samson, he was strong. I mean, man, he was, he was the only one that was cool. Out of all of them. He's the only man's man out of all of them. He was the only cool one on him. But yet he ends up being the biggest fool out of all of them. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's just... Samuel, Samuel ends up being a man of God. I mean, a, a mighty man of God. We, he, he records most of the... Uh, puts most of the Old Testament historical books together for us. It, it was his doing that done that. But anyway, uh, verse 21. And the man Elkanah... And all of his house went up to offer to the Lord their yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child is weaned. And when, then I will bring him uh, that he may be, appear before the Lord and be there forever. Now I'm going to tell you what. First time I ever read this, I got right there. I said, this woman ain't going up to that. She ain't taking that no more. No more. She ain't going back up to Silo. She ain't carrying that youngin' up there. Why? Well, it's like that little baby. When you pick that little baby up, that's just something there, isn't it? Huh? Something about that child. Mother's got a bond with a child that a, that a man don't have. I love my kids. I do. I'd die for my kids. I would. I'd kill for my kids. I would do that too. But I got news for you. My wife has a different bond than I do. She carried them youngins for, for nine months. She did things them youngins I couldn't do. That cleaning out the nose and all you know, boy, like get that nasty stuff away from me. Go blow your own nose, you know. Mothers are special. They have a bond. And I got right here the first time I said, she's not going up to show. She's going to hang on to that young and she's going to break her vow. But she did. Look what happens. Look what happens. Y'all hang on. And, her, uh, and Elkanah, her husband, said to her, do what seemeth uh, thee good, tarry until thou have weaned him, only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until he was weaned. Now, there's three different ideas about this, and I'm just going to give you this. You'll have to make up your own mind. Excuse me. There's the idea of a baby that just gets off of, of nursing, which is around two years old uh, in their day. There's the idea of being weaned where uh, you don't have to look after him quite as much, which is about three or four years old. Then there's the idea where he becomes a man at 12 years old, but uh, I believe it's I believe he's young. I think he's going to be three or four years old. That's my my opinion. You think what you want. Verse 24. Now, when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks, and one of them a flower and a bottle of wine, and she brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young, and they slew the bullock. And brought the child to Eli, and she said, O oh, my Lord, as thy soul liveth, uh, my Lord, I am the woman that stoodeth by thee and praying with the Lord. And this child I prayed, and, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. Now, we're not going to go through everything that happened here, but I want you to see something. Hannah was willing to fulfill her end of the bargain. God gave her that child. Again, ladies, men, are you willing to pray that God will take your children, your grandchildren, and make a difference in this world, in his kingdom? Let me tell you another little story, and I'm going I'm to finish this thing up. We're going to land this plane. I heard a missionary just a couple weeks ago. He was talking about he was over a region 
and part of that region he was over was a lot of Muslim countries that were closed. And there was this young, good-looking, vibrant couple that had three little kids. And they went into a closed country. They felt like that's where God had led them. In this country, if you converted from Islam to Christianity, they cut your head off in the square. Okay. This is recent. <laughs> but that's where they felt like God wanted them to go. And they went over there. And this guy was over that region, and he was, he was summoned one day to go over there and visit with them because they were going to have a special service. They had been working... He had been working with men and she had been working with women as individuals. And they had led people to Christ. And so they decided they were going to, it was the time had come, they had grown in their faith, the time had come to put them together in one place and let them meet each other. And that's what this guy was invited to come be a part of. 30 new converts in an all-Muslim country come together and for the first time they got to meet each other. You say, why are you telling me that for? Somebody's little boy and somebody's little girl and somebody's grandchildren had to go do that. God didn't do it by osmosis. Are you willing to pray that God would use your child like that? Think about what I'm saying to you, folks. Mothers, I know, I, I, I love mothers. I, I, I love all you ladies because y'all feed me, y'all look after me, y'all pamper me. I'm telling you. But I also know y'all. I know the one I live with. I'll let God go so far, but then I'm going to pull the reins. i got to be in control. I can't trust him with my child. I can't trust him with that. Ladies, can you trust God with your children and your grandchildren? Can you trust God to maybe call you somewhere besides here? Look at this thing now. You think the story's over with because Hannah, she was broken. And then Hannah was blessed. She had, to, she had what she sought out. But now I want you to look with me. Go over to chapter 2. And we're going to read starting in verse 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a, a linen ephod. In other words, a, a little thing goes around. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. When she came up with her husband, to the, year, uh, to the offer, the yearly sacrifice. So each year she brought him clothes. She still continued to minister to him. She still continued to keep up with him. Look at verse 20. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of the woman for, uh, for this loan, which is lent to the Lord. And they went to their own house. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters, and the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Folks, Hannah gave back that which was causing her so much grief. God gave it to her, and she gave it back. And then God replaced it. You see that? With three sons and two daughters. He just kept blessing her. He just kept blessing her. But there's something else I want you to see right here in this one verse. Look with me down in, in verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Where did we read that just recently? In Luke chapter 2 when it's talking about Jesus growing up. And he grew in favor with God and with man. Samuel was growing in favor with man, in wisdom with men but he was also growing in his, his faith with God. And as I said, he is going to be the most powerful uh, of all of the judges that Israel would have. He would actually anoint two kings and he would, he would judge Israel for years. 
So Hannah was blessed. She was, this, this trouble was taken off of her when she finally got before God and said, here's what it is. I'm, I know this is selfish, but if you'll give this to me, that, that this embarrassment will be taken off me, I'll give him back to you. And she did. And then God says, I'm going, I'm going to replace him with children that you can actually hold on to each and every day. And not only that, but the one that you gave me is going to be a blessing for your nation. You never know that child, that grandchild, what they will do for God. But I got news for you, as long as you try to put them in a cage, they'll never fly. You got to trust God with your children. Ladies, I love you. I know how it is. I got children. But we got we got to commit ourselves and to say, I trust God with my children. Are you willing to do that with me today? Are you willing to do that? I'm not talking about superficially. I'm talking about in your heart. Are you willing to say, God, I commit my child, my grandchild to you. Use them as you will. Be careful. Be careful. But the safest place there is is in the center of God's will. Again, I'm going to go back and say what I said a while ago. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you've never come to that place where you said, Lord, I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior, you're still not part of the family of God. You can be part of this church family. You can be part of the human race, but you're not part of God's family. Most important decision you can ever make is that right there. And if you do that, then you can do what we've talked about. If you need to make that decision, I, I invite you, I invite you to come this morning. Get it right before it's eternally too late. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised this afternoon. Get it right before it's eternally too late. I was talking to Phil Albright, and he was telling me about his mother, and he said she, she walked... <laughs> She walked as a little girl to, to a revival down at Fall Creek. And he said, preacher preached hard and said she was under conviction, but she didn't go forward. And she's walking home. And as she's walking home that evening, she, she just was under such great conviction. She stopped on the side of the road and said, God, if you'll just let me live till tomorrow night, I'll go forward and I'll receive Jesus as my Savior. But just let me make it to tomorrow night. Man, we need to have people that's got that kind of fear in their life today. Let me get saved. Do you need to be saved? That's the most important thing that you can do. If you do, let's get that done. If you are saved, again, let's commit that which we got to God. It's His anyway. He can control it and look after it better than you can. He really can. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the Father, we thank you for our mother. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord, we This is Pastor Marty Granger here at Cedar Grove, and we just want to thank you for tuning in with us this Sunday uh, and spending your Sunday morning worshiping with us here. It means so very much to us as we see people tune in week after week. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, 
that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Today, as we went through the service, as you worshiped with us, if you feel like God's dealing with your heart on the fact that you're not saved and you need to make a decision uh, for him, we'd love to help you in that process. It's a simple process. You just got to agree with God. And that is that you're a sinner and you're in need of a savior. If you'll call upon him, he will save you. The Holy Spirit's dealt with your heart and you're a Christian and you need to make some decisions. We'd encourage you to do that as well. Now, again, we've enjoyed you being with us this Sunday and we look forward to worshiping with you again at the midweek and next Sunday as well. In the meantime, if you need to contact us, that information will be made available. May God richly bless you and we look forward to seeing you at the next appointed time.